This relatively new pass was constructed between 1984 and 1988 at the then staggering cost of 125 million rand. Leading up to the Huguenot Tunnel from its southern side is the awe-inspiringly beautiful high-altitude Hugosport viaduct, the first of its kind to be built in South Africa. The bridge is simultaneously curved, rising and cumbered, constructed by the incremental method. It soars high above the farm patchwork Hugosport Valley. The 4 km long tunnel drastically reduced the distance of the old pass by 11 km. Scenery along the pass is amongst the best in the Western Cape and it's probably the finest mountain pass along the entire N1. During the winter rainfall season there are several waterfalls to be seen, some of them falling from such great heights that they disintegrate into mist before reaching the bottom. The pass starts just after the Rawsonville intersection on the N1 and crosses the Moulinars River within 300 meters. After a fairly long straight, the first left hand turn beckons, which is the start of a series of gentle S curves. It's something of an optical illusion, as the road doesn't look like it's climbing very steeply, but it actually is. Over the next 7 kilometers, the road climbs 502 vertical meters to the point where the Huguenot Tunnel entrance is reached. The views along this section are spectacular, as the road is hemmed in by the towering mountains and if you're fortunate enough to drive this pass during winter, the waterfalls on the right hand side of the road are quite magnificent. The road varies between one and three lanes, but for the majority of the distance you'll have two lanes to work with. Speed limits range between 180 km per hour, except for the tunnel, which has variable electronic speed control, but on a good day it's mostly set at 90. Safety records show that most of the accidents occur on either side of the tunnel and not inside the tunnel itself. This pass, despite all the excellent engineering, remains a major pass of 24 kilometers, traversing a big mountain range and carries with it the alternative dangers of high traffic volumes, much of which is heavy trucks and buses. The traffic authorities have made a major effort in terms of controlling overloaded and unroadworthy vehicles and focus specifically on trucks. A permanent Weybridge station operating 24 hours a day is located at the eastern end at the Rawsonville intersection and a second compulsory truck stop and inspection point has been built about one kilometre east of the Huguenot Tunnel. In addition, there's an emergency arrest to bed for westbound trucks just before the toll pay point at the western end of the pass. The Moulinars River and its tributaries are popular fly fishing destinations. Towering majestic mountains on either side provide for a glorious drive on the smooth and gentle curves of the new pass. The construction company should be applauded for their highly successful style of construction working on a minimal impact campaign on the local environment. Don't be alarmed when you suddenly see oncoming traffic at this point. This is the lane that feeds into the new pass from the old pass, the R101. A complex system of overpasses and bridges can be seen ahead with an option to take the left lane over the old pass. The section between the second way bridge and the entrance to the Huguenot Tunnel is a high accident rate and drivers need to be alert here as the road merges into a single lane. The Huguenot Tunnel itself is an engineering masterpiece. During 1988, the tunnel was constructed with teams working from its opposite ends. When the two teams at last met deep inside the center of the mountain, the momentous occasion was celebrated in newspapers across the country. Initially, a service tunnel was cut and then preceded by the significantly larger main tunnel, which runs directly east of the original tunnel. Engineering techniques from Europe were employed and safety standards are impeccably high. Accidents have occurred inside the tunnel, with a few trucks having caught fire. Take careful heed of the escape routes as you drive through and tune your car radio into the frequency displayed at the entrance. Curved into a single gentle S-bend, the 4 km long tunnel is cleverly lit using a decreasing and increasing intensity depending on how deep you are in the tunnel. Once through the tunnel, the road splits into two lanes. The left one is dedicated to heavy trucks, so if you're in a normal vehicle, rather use the right-hand lane. Next up, you'll be crossing the towering Hugosport viaduct. Keep an eye on the windsock, as the notorious southeaster known as the Cape Doctor buffets and shoves cars and trucks about, requiring vigilant driving, especially by the drivers of larger unladen vehicles. 
After the viaduct, the road straightens out and descends steeply at a gradient of 1 in 10 towards the toll point at the end of the pass. Approaching the toll pay point, the road underpasses the old R101 and the speed limit rapidly changes from 100 to 80 to 60. Be aware of a permanent speed camera mounted under the overhead pedestrian bridge. There are four overhead bridges along the pass, one of which is a pedestrian bridge, and amongst the many engineering marvels along this pass is the tunnel itself, the graceful viaduct, and many kilometers of carefully constructed underground culverts and retaining walls. All of these add up to the Toyscliff Pass today being a major improvement on the old pass, which had proved to be a considerable headache, causing many serious accidents with few overtaking opportunities on a double width road with no emergency lanes. From its starting point at the Rawsonville intersection through to its termination at the toll point in Pal, this 23,8 km long pass is one of the longer passes in South Africa, including a mountain pass as well as a port. It's quite magnificent from beginning to end, a visual feast, regardless of how many times one drives it.